Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endured forever. I feel like the one person that said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. And I'm so glad that we're here on today, uh, giving the Lord thanks and giving him praise mm -hmm. for all that he has done. One psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, yeah. where would we be? Yeah. Amen. And I truly echo that. I'm glad that we're on the Lord's side now. Yeah. And, and as that song says, I'm on the Lord's side now, and everything yeah. is all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we declare and decree it. We want to go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, if you've got a particular prayer request, you can let it be known at this particular time. Yes, let's remember Brother Thomas Sanders, that the Lord will bless him and encourage his heart on today. Amen. Yes. And let us pray for the success of the service and men and women and children everywhere. All right, let us have a word of prayer. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly come before you and we say thank you and we praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness that you've shown unto us. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our hearts and our minds and our spirit as we worship you in spirit and in truth on this day. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known and any unspoken request. Lord, we ask you that you bless by your power, by your might, and that you would send great deliverance. Bless our Bible study on tonight. Let something be said and done to encourage us, to inspire our hearts, and grant us a deeper revelation into you, into your will, into your desires. And bless us, Lord, that we'll lay aside everything that is not like you and cleave unto you, Lord, with a purpose in heart. Father, we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor, grant the door of utterance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. I want y'all to turn with me on today, I was going to say tonight, I guess it's the end of evening, uh, uh, to Romans chapter number 8. Amen. Very familiar passages of Scripture. And the uh, book of Romans is like the Magna Carta of uh, uh, the Constitution of Christendom, our salvation. Paul, he wrote a very uh, beautiful letter that tells about what sin did for us and also how we are justified in Christ. And then he talks about how we ought to live a sanctified life, sanctification. And then he talks about glorification. Uh, those that uh, follow after Christ are going to be glorified. So he talks about the condemnation. He talks about righteousness or justification. Then he talks about sanctification. Then he talks about glorification covers the whole gamut in the book of Romans, and it's a, a wonderful book to study, and um, so we're going to take an excerpt out of that book um, from the book of Romans chapter number 8, and as you know in chapter number 7, Paul was dealing uh, with the, uh, the, the troubles uh, that he had when he got saved, and how he was going back and forth uh, with, with his sinful nature and his own desires. And uh, they were bringing him into captivity. But he, he realized something that uh, uh, by uh, following after the spirit, that there is uh, power in that. He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? And he realized and got revelation that there is great deliverance in Christ. Amen. Amen. There's great deliverance in Jesus. Yes. Uh, far more than what we can even imagine. Amen. The deliverance that is in Christ Jesus. When, when, when God said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, he meant that. Amen. There's no perishing in Christ. There's only life in Christ. 
and in him it is total victory. Amen? Um, everything you need that pertains unto life and godliness is in Christ Jesus. Amen? If it's outside of Christ, you don't need it. But if it's inside of Christ, you need it, and it's accessible to you, and you have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Christ. Thank you, Lord. So, so as we then, let's look at Romans then, um, uh, chapter number 8 and verse number 1. It's really a continuation of Romans uh, uh, 7, 23 through 25. But we're going to, uh, well, we might as well read it. Let's look at Romans 23 through 25 uh, just for a uh, background. But I see another law in my members, uh -huh. warring against the law of my mind, mm -hmm. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. All right, the battlefield is in the mind. All right. Oh, wretched man that I am, <laughs> who shall deliver me from the body, the body of this death? Yes. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, uh -huh. but with the flesh the law of sin. Amen. So he realized that there was a difference. Uh, there was a difference in, in serving God, and he had to attain or to understand how to serve him with the Holy Ghost, amen, and, and live in that victory, live in that power. All right, so in verse number, uh, chapter number eight and number one, he begins to explain it, all right, read. There is therefore now no condemnation uh -huh. to them which are in Christ Jesus, yes. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, now notice what he said. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation uh, to them that are in Christ Jesus. Uh, when we get into Christ, we, uh, as far as a lifestyle of condemnation, feeling convicted and condemned, uh, like, you're, like you're a dead man walking, that goes away. Amen? That goes away. Under the law, they, they, they had that feeling uh, 364 days of year. Uh, and, and only one day a year, they felt free. Uh, that was when they offered that sacrifice once a year for the sins that they had committed the previous year <laughs> uh, by the high priest. My man from feeling guilt and from feeling shame and from feeling like the sentence of death is upon us. So he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And when we accepted the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or accepted Christ into our life, we were translated uh, into, by a, on a spiritual realm, into the body of Christ. Amen? Uh, we are of his kingdom now. We are in him. Uh, and he is within us. Amen? So he says, there are no, therefore now no condemnation uh, to them who are in Christ Jesus. Now here's the rub. Uh, who walk not after the flesh. Amen? Don't live a lifestyle that is, is dedicated to evil desires. Amen? God freed us from that. Uh, he freed us in Christ Jesus from a lifestyle of evil desires. Does evil thoughts come to me? Does evil thoughts come to you? Yes. But we've got power over that that we don't obey it in the uh, our desires, uh, in our flesh. Amen? So he says, who walk not after the flesh, that walk deals with living. Amen? We live in a world that is corrupt. Amen? Uh, though we have been delivered from this world, but we still live in this world, and it's corrupt. And the things around us is corrupt. Uh, so one day, God's going to burn up everything that you can see. Uh, why? Because it's evil. It's corrupt. But now notice, uh, uh, so our desires 
Uh, we don't go after the flesh, but we walk after the what? The spirit. So we've got something that is within us, the Holy Ghost, that leads us and guides us away from things that are evil, that can contaminate us and, and bring us back into bondage. Uh, the Holy Ghost is what the Bible calls a, 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 a paraclete, uh, and one that walks alongside you uh, and says, and you may say, Frank, don't do that. Frank, don't say that. Uh, watch, watch your mouth. Uh, 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 go ahead and apologize. Straighten things up. Uh, and Frank, it's time to pray. Uh, it's, it's time to read your word. Uh, it's time to meditate. Uh, that's the Holy Ghost. It never gets exhausted. Uh, and it's always speaking to us uh, and to lead us into God. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Go ahead. The unction. The unction. I like that. The unction of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It leads and guides us. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It tell you don't don't go in there. Uh, or, or go in there. Go this way. Uh, quote this scripture. This is the scripture. Uh, the Holy Ghost. Then, then, then not only that, it'll pray for you. Uh, it'll make intercession for you. Uh, when you when you begin to pray and the Holy Ghost say, uh, 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 you're praying right yet. You're, this, this ain't the right prayer, so let me take over. Tap you on the shoulder. Uh, let me take over. Then it'll start speaking in a language that God understands. <laughs> uh, make, it, <laughs> make it intercession for you. Uh, why? Because we don't know how to pray as we ought. Uh, but but the spirit knows. Uh, so so you don't try to quench the spirit. Uh, you allow the spirit to pray. Uh, go with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. There's an unction there. Amen. There's an unction there. And the more we learn to yield to that unction, the better saints will be. Amen. Hallelujah. And and the spirit dwells within you. It abides within you. Have you ever thought about you and the Holy Ghost have a relationship? Uh, that I got a relationship with the Holy Ghost and, and, and that relationship should be intimate. Uh, anybody that lives in your house, you should have an intimate relationship with them. When, when I mean by intimate, intimate, I mean close. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. My brother, Uh -huh. and you continue to override it. Yeah. Then God said, I won't strive with you always. Uh -huh. uh huh. I'll let you do you. Right. Uh, because you're not being led by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the Spirit, uh, 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 the Bible talks about Christ being touched with the feelings of your infirmities. And, and the spirit is, 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 how can I say it? Help me here, Holy Ghost. The spirit, uh, uh, we have to be careful because we can grieve it. Uh, the Holy Ghost can become uh, 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 emotionally, if you allow me to say it, I'm paraphrasing, uh, upset with you uh, because, because you're not doing uh, what, what, is, what, is, what is commanding you to do? Now, notice I didn't use the word asking. Uh, 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 what it's commanding you to do. Amen? And, 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 and we can grieve that spirit. Uh, uh, and, and, and what grieves it is our uh, uh, disobedience to it. Uh, why? Why, does it, why is it grieved? Because it knows. Uh, it knows the danger. It knows the fear of God. Uh, that's like our children. When they don't uh, listen to us and we get upset with them, and the reason why we get upset with them, not just because they disobeyed us, but we know the consequences uh, of their actions and, and, and the road that they're on. Uh, why? Because we've been there. <laughs> uh, the Holy Ghost is, has been where we're trying to go. Huh? <laughs> That's what makes it a great guy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, go ahead. I was telling uh, my wife, I said, the Holy Ghost is real. 
It's real. I said it's so real because that fear is there. It's there. Uh-huh. It's a real fear. Yeah. About the Holy Ghost and about walking with the Lord. Absolutely. And it's and I often say the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is multifaceted. Uh, it, it serves multiple purposes. Uh, if, you, if you die with it, it'll get you back up. Uh, uh, it'll lead you and guide you. It'll comfort you. Uh, uh, it'll talk to you. Uh, calm you down. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It'll, it'll take over for you uh, if you allow it. Uh, thank you, Lord. And, and, and it also empowers you to, to accomplish the task and the purpose that God has for you in your life. Amen? Uh, it brings an anointing. <laughs> uh, it's multifaceted. Uh, amen? Thank you, Lord. And then, you know, uh, we, don't give it, we don't give the Holy Ghost much credit in this, that when you read the scriptures, the Bible tells you in John, it teaches you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't just get revelation on your own. It's the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you read, it teaches you. Uh, it opens up the scriptures. It connects the word of God to where you have those aha moments. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't know. My mind blew up my mind. <laughs> uh, uh, and, then, and, then, and then the Holy Ghost, when you're in a teaching session or a preaching session, the Holy Ghost is right there. Uh, hallelujah. And, and that what you feel on the inside, that, that, that the word can go out uh, uh, and, and it'll affect different people different ways. Uh, that's the Holy Ghost. Uh, sometimes I talk to people after service. They got this out of the message. They got that out of the message. They got that out of the message. It, it delivered to them what they needed. Uh, hallelujah. My God. Hey, it's something about that Holy Ghost. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, 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 absolutely. We just got to pay attention. And not, not only that, I like what you said. It'll direct you where to go, when to go, and then when you get there, it'll give you what to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, that, so that the Holy Ghost is all about victory. Uh, the victory that Christ gained for you. Uh, that's what it's about. It's about total victory. Amen? Hallelujah. Go ahead. It's so important that Jesus told the disciples them to go on to Jerusalem. Yes. And they're being endowed with power from on high. Yes. You need the Holy Ghost. You need it. You need it. You need it. Amen? And, and, and we ought to live in it. Huh? Live with it. Become intimate with it uh, as a relationship. Amen? Uh, and, and you know, uh, Christ described the Holy Ghost. He said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. Uh, I use the pronoun he uh, uh, as, 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 as in a person. Uh, uh, so that we can live with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And I don't want to offend the Holy Ghost. Uh, I want to be intimate in, in the sense of knowing its voice uh, 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 and, and walking with it. Amen? Some, some people, uh, uh, I was talking to this one brother, and he said, yeah, we here, and, and he'd be the only one in the room. I said, what you mean you here? We here. You the only one here. Me and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we here. <laughs> I couldn't argue with him. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. This one brother, every time I see him, and his mother was a, a pillar in the church. Yeah. But he's not in the church. Uh -huh. Every time I see him, he says, hey, you got that Holy Ghost with you. Wow. <laughs> and it's with me. It's with me. <laughs> uh, it's abiding. Right. Amen. It's dwelling. It's communing. And I'm communing with it. Amen. Now notice this. Uh, read that verse number one again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
So if I walk after my fleshly desires, I'm going to end up back into condemnation. But if I walk in the Spirit, I'm going to be free from condemnation. Amen? Conditional. Uh, huh? It's conditional. Yes, absolutely conditional. Amen? All right? So, so, and that walk means to live where you dwell and commune. Who is leading you and guiding you? Now, uh, when I was studying this, the Lord, he wanted me to say this to you all, that, that you are in a world that is corrupt and evil. Uh, you can't get away from it. Huh? But the choices that you make, uh, is, 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 is that which is conditional. Amen. There's good and evil all around us. Huh? We've got to learn like Jesus learned. How to choose the good and refuse the evil. Amen. Uh, and that's the environment that we walk in. Uh, we make good choices. Amen. That's, that should be our goal. To make good choices. To do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Amen? And, and the Holy Ghost, it encircles us. It encaps us, if you allow me to say it. To lead us and to guide us into that way. Amen? Hallelujah. Am I right? And you know, you know, I, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. We haven't tapped into this part yet. But, but, but the devil is, is shrewd. Huh? The Bible describes him as what? The most susceptible beast in the field. Huh? Doesn't it? Huh? And, 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 and he's wiser than us. Huh? He knows the scriptures better than us. Huh? But he doesn't know it better than the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he's not more powerful than the Holy Ghost. Huh? And he's not omnipresent like the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. So, 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 so we got power over him uh, if we follow after the Spirit. Uh, what does the Bible say? Holy Ghost says, resist the devil steadfast and he will flee. Uh, that's the counsel uh, of the Holy Ghost. Resist. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and that unction, I like the word, I like that word he used, that unction. You know, you can meet people and, and they have literally transformed themselves into angels of light. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's something about it. You say, oh, there's something about you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep my eye. Uh, keep my eye open. Uh, you sound too good to be true. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's just, just something. I can't put my finger on it. Uh, and, and it's not being paranoid. Uh, but it's just being, the Holy Ghost is, is, is just giving you something to watch. Uh, watch. Amen? And pray. So, you know, uh, 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 you got to watch. Amen? It's a warning. It's a warning. There's a reason you don't feel comfortable around that. Right. So the Holy Ghost is warning you. Warning you. Just letting you know, hey, it's something. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Right. You just be careful. Be careful. A red flag. Amen? You see a lot of red flags. Hey, it's a red flag. It ain't, it ain't green. <laughs> you can't make it green. <laughs> Amen? Uh, and, and notice, I love it. Uh, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Huh? So it's not going to tell you a lie. And it's going to lead and guide you into all truth. Amen? Hallelujah. We need the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Scripture. Yep. The devil can shout. Yep. He can speak. Mm -hmm. he, he can pray. He can do all those things. Yes. There's one thing he cannot do. Come on. <laughs> he can't live holy. Can't live holy. He can't live holy. That's right. That's right. He can attempt it, but but somewhere down the line, he's gonna start cussing. <laughs> right. He's gonna give you some false counsel. <laughs> Go ahead. That's what I was going to say. Eventually, that person will reveal him or herself. Yeah. I, uh, that was the person.
person some time ago, and then I dealt with them again, I think it was yesterday. And when I, when I dealt with the person the first time, I'm thinking, there's something about that person that I, it just, it's not right. Uh -huh. it's, it's, I just don't like, I don't agree with it. There's something in me that just don't agree with it. Yeah. When I met it yet, when I met the person yesterday, and then he re he revealed himself. See? He was saying things, and I'm like, oh, that's what. That's it what it is. That's that's why I got that <laughs> feeling that yeah. I need to watch that person. So eventually, a person will reveal themselves either by their action or their speech. Right. Now, I'm glad you said that. Now, when that occurs, then 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 you be open. Uh, be, be, what I mean by being open, now you are watchful. Uh, uh, now I ain't saying now uh, you stop all dealings with the individual, but, but you know now they got other motives. Uh, that they got some, uh, uh, some, 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 some other things that they may try to lead you into. So, so your, your guard should go up. Uh, if, uh, uh, pardon, pardon the expression. Your spidey senses should go. You almost said this way. Your holy ghost senses <laughs> should go up, uh, and then, and then that kind of tells you how far you should go with the individual. Uh, yeah, you follow me? Hallelujah. Uh, because Jesus didn't cut himself off from sinners. Uh, he just went as far as he could go. Uh, we we just go as far as we can go, uh, uh, and then we always show them the light. <laughs> that's why the Bible say, if it's possible, yeah, live, live peaceably. In other words, you, if once, you, once the Lord uh, show you something, or you find something out, He reveals something to you about the person or person, then you you need to be watchful and you need to pray. You need to know as you say how far to go. Yeah, you need to know what to say, how to speak. Person and all. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Holy Ghost is there to reveal that. Yes. Uh, and that and, and and to help you to live peaceably. I'm gonna flip the script a little bit. Now, if if the Holy Ghost is warning you about the individual to let you know the individual is a backbiter, mm -hmm. uh, then you don't tell all your stories. <laughs> You follow me? Uh, uh, so I know you do a story carry. Uh, if, if you, if you, I'm listening to you, you bringing me all these bones uh, about other people, so I know that, that you'll take a bone uh, from me and deliver it to somebody else. Uh, you'll bring the dog a bone. <laughs> so, so the Holy Ghost warns you how to have relationship with other people so that, so that, so that you don't get caught off guard. Uh, uh, because the Holy Ghost wants to protect you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't this beautiful? It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Go ahead. In the Holy Ghost, you'll be a person of few words. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely. A few words. Because, you know, people like to keep stuff going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the devil likes to keep stuff going. Stuff going. Yeah, bring the vision. That's him. Huh? Amen. All right. So notice then. He said, now we talked about walk, walking after the spirit. And that means to live uh, and make good choices with the spirit in this world. Amen. God hasn't, uh, if you allow me to say, taken us out of this world. And he hasn't taken us away from the temptation of evil. Uh, but he will keep you from evil. Uh, uh, that's why he gives us the Holy Ghost. And so therefore, I need to develop an intimate relationship with it, with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And then the way to do that is two ways, uh, three ways. It's, 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 it's to, to listen, to trust and obey, and it's to read the word. You've got to study the word. Amen. And you've got to pray. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead. Making good choices according to the will of God. Yes. Also, uh, the life.
light shine within you. Yeah. So you can see, you know. Yeah. God, you're showing your righteousness. Yeah. Because it's the goodness of God that you know that, that you're able to do that. But that's that light that people see in you. That's why mm. uh, that God won't take us out of the world because we are light in the world. In the world. Yeah. So he put us here to deal with the wickedness and the evil here on earth uh, in the world so we can be that light, that shine to show them the direction to him. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And God, the reason why he does what she said doesn't take us from the evil that is in the world but keeps us in this world because he knows the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He knows he has confidence in what he has given you uh, that is able to keep you and save you to the uttermost. Amen. And it was tested uh, when Jesus received. Uh, because when Jesus got the Holy Ghost, the Bible says straightway uh, he was led into the wilderness, watch it, to be tempted uh, of the devil. Uh, uh, he, he, he took the car out for a test drive. Uh, hallelujah. And came back victorious. Uh, hallelujah. You follow what I'm saying? That's confidence. Uh, we have to have confidence in what we have. Amen. Uh, and trust it at all times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. All right. Now notice. Notice in verse number uh, two. What's that? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, that verse number two there, it says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ that's none other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That gospel has been sent unto you and it's a law in it. Amen. That brings you life. Amen. Uh, that's the law of the spirit of life. Uh, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has sent me to preach uh, the what? The gospel. Uh, 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 and, and then it sets at liberty uh, them that are bruised. Amen? Uh, it, it binds up the broken heart. Uh, uh, and it, and, 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 and it, it liberates. It frees. And it's a law of life in it. Amen? Uh, uh, salvation comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, so that's the law of the spirit of life. Amen? Now notice, he says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ have made me what? Free. Free. In whom the Son is set free is what? Free. Free indeed. Freedom. Uh, freedom uh, to choose between good and evil. Uh, at one time, we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> Uh, 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 when, we, when we didn't have Christ, uh, when we didn't have the Holy Ghost, we couldn't help ourselves. We could restrain ourselves uh, for a little while, uh, but, 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 but sooner or later, the right pressure, the right temptation, the enemy comes, uh, we give in to, uh, and brings us back into bondage. I remember uh, when I was out there in the world, I used to try to stop smoking at least three times. Amen. I wanted to quit smoking. Uh, and, and I refrained myself. Uh, for I think I did at least two or three months. Uh, uh, but then here come the pressure. Uh, here, come, here, come, here come all this other stuff going out to the bar. Uh, uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, oh, I just think I just have one just so I can relax. <laughs> you know how we compromise with ourselves. Amen. But when the Holy Ghost came, uh, it took the taste out of my mouth. Uh, uh, and it was instant. Uh, it wasn't no weeding from it. Uh, and, and, and it made it so detestable. Uh, uh, and, and, and I just, I, it was like rank. Uh, it was like, oh, I don't even like the smell. I don't want to be around it. You know, it just, it just did that all in my mind. Uh, and then the benefits of it. Uh, I was able to taste my food, uh, smell my 
of food. Uh, I would say my lungs got better. Uh, uh, and you follow what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And, and, and that was because of, of, of the freedom of the Holy Ghost. Uh, my pockets got heavy. Because uh, uh, I didn't spend all that money. Uh, <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Freedom. Freedom has ramifications. Huh? That'll cause you to, to be able to do more and do things better. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This thing is real. Yes. Huh? Go ahead. I remember my mother was a smoker. Uh huh. She smoked from the time I knew her up until the Lord got ready to save her. Yes. And when the Lord got ready to save her, he began to clean her up. Her clean her up. And the first thing she did was drop cigarettes. Because, you know, back in the day, we could go to the store and get her cigarettes. Right. She sent us to the store all the time to get cigarettes. Yeah. And one day I came in, and I didn't have to go get any cigarettes, and I never saw her smoke. And she just, all of a sudden, she just dropped it. Drop it. In my mind, I'm like, what happened? You know, it was scary. It kind of scared me because all I knew her to do was smoke. Right. You know, and I was kind of nervous. I'm like, what happened? Then later on, she got the Holy Ghost, and I figured it out. You know, God was cleaning her up. Cleaning but her up. And she stopped smoking. Ain't that beautiful? And I couldn't believe it. I was, I was in unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief and scared at the same time. Yeah. I knew how she used to smoke. Amen. You know. And now you hit on a on a major point. You know that 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 when we receive Christ, all old things. Yeah have passed away. Uh, that old lifestyle has been and uh, should pass away. And behold, all other things should become what? New. You are a new creature. Amen? A new creature. A new entity. <laughs> Amen? Uh, with new desires. Am I right? All right. Now no, read that verse, read that verse again. Verse 8, uh, 2, 8 and 2. Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now note it. The law of sin and death is the old covenant. Huh? The, the Pentateuch. The Ten Commandments. Amen? That was never given to deliver anybody. It was literally given to expose sin which equates to what? Death. Death. Amen? That was the reason why the Pentateuch or the Ten Commandments were given. Amen? Huh? The, uh, when the Holy Ghost came, it used it as a schoolmaster, as the scripture says, to lead you to Christ. Huh? It exposes you of your sin. And you know, what, what, what another thing about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is active and working on the individual uh, even before they know it. Uh, uh, because it leads you to repentance. Amen? Uh, and it leads you and lets you know that the things that you're doing is wrong. Uh, you need to repent and turn from it. And then it, it gives you the, the result of your actions, which is death, total separation from God. Huh? And there's a law in it. That's the law. Huh? Huh? The wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Amen? All right. So we see here then, all right, uh, read verse 3 then. What the law could not do, uh -huh. in that it was weak through the flesh, uh -huh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, uh -huh. and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now notice, that verse there is loaded. He said, for what the law could not do, uh, the law could not deliver us. It could not bring us out. It was there only meant to expose and bring about condemnation. But the gospel, on the other hand, was meant to free us and bring us liberation and life. You follow me? Huh? I'm glad we're living in the dispensation of the gospel. Huh? Why? Because now we're living in a dispensation where we can attain freedom. 
huh, where we can live holy. Huh, huh, that, that death has no more dominion or power over us. Amen? Amen? That's the difference. If you compare the, the old covenant huh, or, 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 or the Pentateuch or the Ten Commandments, it brings forth death. Huh? But the gospel, on the other hand, it brings forth life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that, and that life is in Christ. Amen? Go ahead. Uh, read. What's it say? Verse, read three again. But what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Now, the, the law, God's Ten Commandments, always worked on your flesh. Amen? Your evil desires. Your carnality. <laughs> Amen? And don't fool yourself. Uh, uh, if, I, if I allow myself not to read and pray and study, uh, I'll become carnal. Uh, uh, don't fool yourself. If you're not growing in Christ, you're growing in carnality. You're not being stagnant. Uh, there's no stagnation. Uh, uh, it's, it's either you're going uh, with Christ or you're going away from Christ. Amen? Uh, you're either spiritual or you're carnal. There's no, in, there's no purgatory. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. And you know, uh, sometimes we can be spiritual one minute and be carnal the next. Huh? Look at Peter. Peter was asked, who art thou? Uh, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Spiritual. Huh? Jesus told him, well, I'm going to die. Uh, give up my life. Uh, be far from you. Uh, Jesus turned to him and said, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, he, he turned carnal. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't continue in the spiritual realm. Amen? You follow me? Uh, we got we to gotta keep ourselves spiritual. Amen? Amen. Now, don't be like somebody said, uh, uh, how do they say it? Uh, so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. You've heard that before, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, 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 but, you know, you want to be spiritually minded and operate down here on this earth. Amen? Uh, be, be in touch with things going on around you. Amen? Uh, have you ever, you've been around people that was hyper spiritual? Uh, that, 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 that everything uh, that they did and everything they said you know, and, 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 and condemned you uh, for, 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 for whatever little thing you do. Uh, uh, you got your button on your shirt uh, 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 just a little bit too low. Uh, they, they like, hey, you going to hell? You know. Uh, 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 so, so, you know, you want to be in touch. Jesus, he was in touch. Amen. Uh, he didn't condemn that woman that had the issue of blood that wasn't supposed to be in the crowd, wasn't supposed to touch anybody. Huh? Huh? When, when, when she touched him, virtue went out, she received her healing, and he said, don't worry about it, woman. Huh? Your faith have made thee whole. Amen? He could have gave her the whole pinnacle huh? about, about being unclean. You shouldn't even be around us. Huh? Huh? You know you're wrong. Uh, but no, uh, he, he realized that, that she needs spiritual deliverance. Why? Because he was walking in the spirit. Huh? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Savior. Uh, this happened today. There was something my mom was always saying. And she said, just because a woman is buttoning up
everything you should look like. Thank you, Jesus. You know Thank you, Lord. Ah, we've got to open up. Yeah. All right. So read that verse again. For what the law could not do, God sent it. In that it was weak through the flesh, uh -huh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now notice, Jesus then came in the power of the gospel uh, to liberate us. And, and he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Uh, that was the whole purpose of him coming through men. Amen? Uh, so that he could come in uh, the likeness of sinful flesh. So that he can be offered up for us for sin. Amen? So that he can condemn sin <laughs> in the flesh. And that word condemn sin in the flesh just simply means gain the victory over. Uh, uh, everything that could help you captive, help me captive, Jesus gained us the victory. Amen? Hallelujah. He condemned it. He lived above it uh, and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice and he, he rose up out of that grave with all power. Uh, not just some power. He got up with all power. And, and that activated the gospel. Uh, hallelujah. The power of God. Uh, that brings about life uh, and freedom. Amen? Uh, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, read. Where we at? Uh-huh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Uh-huh. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, the law is righteous. Amen? Because it's coming from a righteous God. But we could not fulfill it because of our evil desires, uh, our lustful desires. But with Christ, he gains us the victory so we can overcome uh, our evil desires. So that we can live out the will of God. Uh, uh, that's what righteousness is. Uh, doing that which God calls right. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, read. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now, if, if, if when, when, when uh, we were uh, fleshly, carnal, that's what we paid attention to. Huh? Read. But they that are after the Spirit uh -huh. are the things of the Spirit. Now, when, when we get into Christ, now our appetite has changed. Now I'm mindful of things that are of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to talk to me. I want the Holy Ghost to tell, to, to lead me and guide me. I, I'm mindful of it. Amen? I, I don't want to bring it to an open shame. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, read. For to be carnally minded is death, uh -huh. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, now look at what he said. Read that verse again. For to be carnally minded is death, uh -huh. but to be spiritually is life and peace. Now notice, he said to be carnally minded is what? Yeah. Death. He didn't say to be carnally minded is to be troubled. Huh? He didn't say car to be carnally minded is to be confused. Huh? He didn't say carnally minded is to be sad. He took to be carnally minded all the way to death. Huh? So that tells me then, that puts an emphasis then on carnal mindedness. That, that if I'm walking around with a carnal mind, I'm going to be eternally separated from God. Huh? So, so if I know, what's that, arsenic will kill me, I stay away from it. Huh? Am I right? If I know any type of poison uh, is, is dangerous, I'll stay away from it. Huh? Am I right? If we knew somebody came in here uh, uh, with COVID for real, uh, we'll stay away from that individual. Uh, why? Because it's danger. Am I right? 
So, so, so we ought to equate carnal mindedness to danger, extreme danger, because it can totally separate me from God. Uh, eternal, that's death. You follow? It puts weight on it. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It's weighty. Carnal mindedness is weighty. Huh? It's to be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, it reminds me of my, my friend, old, uh, Brother Dexter. Y'all remember Brother Dexter? Amen. We were all going to go bowling. And Dexter, uh, uh, he was fasting and praying at that time. And we said, Dexter, come on, go bowling with us, man. He said, nope, I don't want to, I don't feel like being carnal minded. <laughs> and you know, it was funny the way he said it, you know, uh, from Gannett, Diana, but the way he said it. He said, you know, I, and you know, we all looked at him, you know, we felt a little convicted, but we went bowling. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, uh, 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 he was, he was, he was following after the spirit. Now, ain't nothing wrong going bowling, don't get me wrong. But he, he was going after the spirit. You know, and just the way he put it, uh, uh, left an impression on him. Uh, don't be carnal minded, Frank. You know what I mean? Uh, why? Because it brings forth death. Amen? But now notice the converse. Read. Because the uh -uh, the converse of uh, the beast. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. To be carnal minded is death. It's death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now notice. The, the be spiritually minded, it brings you more than life. <laughs> huh? uh, God gives you exceedingly and abundant. To be spiritually minded, you'll have life and you'll have peace. Huh? And that word peace deals with shalom. And, and if you study that word shalom, it means you'll have everything provided to you. Not only will you have spiritual life, but God will give you provision in this life. Huh? And that which is to come. You will have no lack. Huh? That's what obedience to the gospel brings. Huh? It brings you spiritual life, and it brings you spiritual uh, 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 provision. Amen? Not only uh, uh, things that are natural, but are things that are written in the word. All the truths and the, the uh, promises of God, it literally becomes yours. Huh? Hallelujah. Uh, no lack. Huh? Everything huh? that pertains unto life and godliness belongs to you. All the promises of God are yea and amen. Huh? Hallelujah. If someone offered you a Hugo and someone offered you a Cadillac, which one would you choose? Huh? You choose the Cadillac. Huh? Am I right? You choose the better. Huh? God has laid before us good and evil. Huh? So that we can choose. Uh, didn't the prophet say, choose you this day? <laughs> uh, whom you going to serve? He said, that's for me and my house. Uh, I'm going to serve the Lord. Uh, I want to serve him. Amen? Uh, and, and, and you know, the, the Holy Ghost hit me one time. I was teaching Bible class, he, and I was talking about choices. And the Holy Ghost spoke to my mind. He said, well, when you chose Christ, there was no other choice. Huh? <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? When you are in him, all other choices pass away. Huh? Huh? He is the choice. Huh? Uh, you made your choice. No turning back. No looking back. Huh? No going back. Huh? Uh, go all the way. Huh? Huh? Go all the way. Huh? Mind made up. Heart fixed. Go all the way. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My made up. That come on, son. My brother. But oh, wait a minute, hold on. I gotta refocus. Go ahead. Say again. Always thought of choosing 
Christ as the utopia yeah. of life. <laughs> it don't go no higher. It don't go no higher. It don't get no better. It don't get no better. Yeah. We know that's bad English. It's but the utopia. It's the utopia. It doesn't go any higher. It doesn't get any better. Huh? Hallelujah. Wow. Scripture tells us he far above principalities and powers. Huh? At the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. Huh? Uh, there's, there's, there's no other blessing than the blessing of Jesus Christ upon your life. Amen? Uh, I don't care if they give me the grand poobah title. Huh? To be called a saint of God. Huh? To be called a child of God. Huh? Be called the son of God. Huh? Hallelujah. That's it right there. Huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the choice. Amen. Saints used to sing that song. I made Jesus my choice. Uh, when the road gets tough, uh, <laughs> uh, the going gets rough, uh, uh, the hills are hard to climb. Uh, then you notice, I decided. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's what it is. Uh, we got to decide. Uh, and then keep on deciding. Uh, but uh, what I mean by that is, uh, 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 realize that whatever you're going through whatever you're enduring that Christ is the choice. Uh, he's the way. Uh, when I was preparing for this Bible study, the Lord put it in my mind. See, he put a lot of stuff in my mind to tell you. Amen. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. That, that, that he said, he said, uh, stick with him and it will get better. Huh? Uh, come on here. Always. If you stick with him, it'll get better. Huh? Hallelujah. But now, if you depart from him, it'll only get worse. It won't get better, will it? <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, stick with me. Tell the saints. Tell them to stick with me. Tell them to hold on. Tell them to endure. Tell them to wait. Huh? Huh? It'll get better. Hallelujah. Shanda. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, my sister. Witness. <laughs> hey! Uh, 
Follow me. Go ahead. telling me to tell the saints that that endure with him it'll get better yes. amen he won't leave us he won't forsake us he'll be with us yes. that's the better choice yes. amen yes. all right what verse we in seven all right read what's that read six again for to be carnally minded is death, uh -huh. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. All right, read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. All right, now notice. He's talking about that carnal mind. But be carnally minded, uh, which we ought to stay away from, we ought to recognize when we're becoming carnal minded. Uh, just because you got the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you can't become carnal minded. Be carnal with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that sounds bad though, don't it? But it's true. Uh, you can see some carnal-minded saints. And the Holy Ghost just doesn't leave you because you're carnal-minded. Uh, uh, that's a misnomer. That's a misconception. Uh, why? Because the Holy Ghost is always trying to reconvert you back to Christ. Amen? So it ain't just going to give up on you like that. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. We ought to praise God that the Holy Ghost don't give up on us. Huh? Huh? If your mother and father forsake you, huh? it's the Lord that will take you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But notice what it said. For the, uh, what verse? Seven. Seven. Uh, because the carnal mind is enmity of what? Against God. Amen. Read for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Meaning that it's not subject to God's Ten Commandments. A carnal-minded person will break all of God's Ten Commandments. Amen? Huh? Y'all know what the Ten Commandments are, right? Huh? And the carnal-minded person will break them all, such as some of us. Huh? Am I right? Read. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So, so when I'm walking in my carnal-mindedness, I can't, uh, uh, I cannot please God. Can't make Him happy. So that should tell us something. Our lives should please God. Amen. It's in Him we live. It's in Him we move. Huh? It's in Him we have our being. When you. When you really understand the depths of this thing, you realize that, that your life is no longer your own. Uh, you are a servant of the Lord. Uh, not your will, but His will should be done. You follow? I was, I was teaching that concept to... to, to, to uh, it was a men's Bible class. And men are strong-willed. And I was, I, was, I, I was teaching that to them, and you could see the perplexion upon their face that, that, that uh-uh, God wants to help me to do what I want to do. That's the wrong concept. God is not in the business of helping you do what you want to do. That's the devil's, uh, uh, that's his concept. 
Huh? Because he knows what you want to do is opposite from what God wants you to do. So he'll help you. Huh? Oh, man. If they had bricks, they would have thrown them at me. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. But we got to realize uh, it's not my will, but it's God's will. Mother Davis? I was thinking, too, as you were saying that, God don't accept anything that's flesh. No! You know? And that's why he sent the Holy Ghost here on earth to help us to walk in the Spirit. Yes. It's the same as when we get ready to get our new body. We have to be changed. Flesh, flesh cannot enter into new Jerusalem. Flesh and blood. So God, that's right. So God does not like, he, 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 he won't accept anything that's flesh. Right. You have to be spiritual. Have to be spiritual. Yeah. Look at look at Cain and Abel. Cain offered God a good sacrifice, but it wasn't the right sacrifice. Amen. And when he was given the opportunity to change, he refused. So he was rejected. Amen. We've got to give God what He desires. Now, uh, 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 Romans twelve. And two, I believe, it says, uh, or one, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a what? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable servant. Then it says, be not conformed, but be what? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and what? Acceptable. Uh, will of God. Uh, and that's what the Holy Ghost does. It gets on board to help you uh, stop being double-minded, <laughs> uh, unstable in all your ways, but to help transform your mind. Uh, to renew your mind so that you can prove what is God's good and acceptable uh, will. Am I right? Now the reason why I brought that scripture up is this. If, if an individual don't walk in his presence, if, if they're not walking in the spirit, they will never uh, attain unto that concept. They will never make that choice completely. What do you mean, Brother Pastor? That individuals who are not walking in the spirit when, when, when another opportunity comes that's more appealing, they'll go after that. Hmm? They'll make that choice. Then they'll get hurt. They'll repent. Come back to God. Hmm? Follow we got to make the right choice. Uh, get, get, allow the Holy Ghost. Now here it is. Allow the Holy Ghost to, to help us to understand the deep things of God. Huh? Not just being a surface saint. Be a deep saint. Huh? Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost dwell in your heart. And to reveal the, the, the spiritual deep things of God that are only spiritually deserved. Amen. There's a level in God that, that we can we can we can have some wisdom and knowledge and deepness. Huh? I don't want to stay in the kindergarten. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on to perfection. Amen. And the only way to do that is to allow the Spirit to reveal these deep things to you. Now, how do you do that? By through obedience to it. When you obey the Holy Ghost, when you obey the teachings, when you accept the teachings and perform it in your life, you, you, you gain another level. God is able to trust you now with more. You follow? You become a protege. <laughs> hey! 
Hallelujah. Go ahead. I was praying the other day, and I, I, I prayed, and a lot of times, for a long time, I've been praying and asking God that uh, I want to launch out into the deep. You know, yeah. I was praying the other day, and the thought came in my mind as I was praying. You, there's deeper depths. You, you know, you can launch into the deep, but there, there's deeper water. Yeah. You go into. You know, so you continue traveling in God. You don't just get in one place nope. and stop. Nope. You know, I'm thinking that once I get in there and launch out into the deep, it's all right. You know, but the Holy Ghost let me know, no, you're not all right. You keep moving. Keep but moving. You get deeper. You know, yeah. you want to get deeper. So as you, as you uh, stay there for a period, God moves you. You go on to the deeper part of your water. If I'm making any sense. Absolutely, you are. We don't ever want to come to a point where we're complacent in God. Huh? We achieve a plateau and now we rest. God is not like that. Huh? God is ever reaching. God is ever revealing. God is always on the move. Amen? We can't allow ourselves to reach a certain level and say, well, okay, well, I'm done. I'm going to stay here. On this level, I'm comfortable. That ain't God. Hmm? Got to keep reaching. Paul said, "I'm forgetting those things that are behind, huh? And I'm and I'm reaching for the things that are before me." Didn't he say that? Yeah. And then he said, "When it gets rough, then I press yeah. toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus." Amen. He, he styles this as a, a, a race. Amen? Huh? Huh? He says, even those, he says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall what? Renew their strength. They shall start out running. Huh? They, shall, they shall start out flying, not up as wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall do what? Walk. All continual motion. That, that scripture deals with the stages of life. Uh, when you're in your heyday, you fly. Uh, when you get middle age, uh, you, you run. Notice I said middle age. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And then when you get a little older, you walk. Uh, when you get to that stage, then you should be walking worthy. <laughs> Of the vocation wherewith you've been called. Amen? To continual progression, for continual movement. Amen? No stagnation. My brother? God is inexhaustible. Inexhaustible. You can't exhaust God. No. And, and, and long as you're on this road, you're going to be walking. Yes. And, 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 Trusting in Him. Yeah. And never feeling like I have arrived. Yeah. You know, some people feel like I have arrived. Hallelujah. But no, we never arrived. No. Until our feet leave this ground, we're going to always need strife. Strive. That's what Jesus told the disciples. He said, Strive to enter it. <laughs> he said, With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things. He said, Just strive to yeah. enter it. Believe. Amen. Thank you. Never, never get at ease in Zion. Huh? Never think that you have arrived. Amen. Never, never get, never get that head. Huh? You about to get bumped. <laughs> but, but again, I'm, I'm thinking too, when you're in those other stages where you're uh, you know, flying or whatever that is. Yeah. You know, like a learning period. Yeah. You're learning. Then when you get so you start walking, you're focused more. Focus. You start paying attention to little details. You know, yes. so you're walking, it's like you have more time. Yeah. You know, to, to look around and focus more and, and you make better choices. Yeah. And that's what he wants. My God. Help us here tonight. All right, read. Where we at? Uh-huh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. 
Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, he's putting out a reality. He said, but ye are not in the flesh. So we ought not act like we're in the flesh. Reality is, we're not in the flesh. We're in the what? Spirit. Amen? If so be, the Spirit of God does what? Dwell in you. And that dwelling is talking about intimacy. You got a relationship with it. Huh? I know it's, it's possible for people to stay in the same house, you not know, talk to each other, don't have no kind of relationship with each other, don't speak to each other, and that, is that possible? Yeah. Huh? Be ships in the night. Yeah. But then there is possible for those that are dwelling with each other to be close, to talk to each other, amen? To have a relationship. And that's what God wants us to have with the Holy Ghost. I should value this Holy Ghost. Uh, to, to where I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna lose it. I don't want it to leave me. Huh? I don't wanna let it go. Am I right? Now, people in your house. When they get up in the morning, just so to speak, people go their separate ways. Huh? One go this way, one go that way. You know, and then they meet back up together at the house. But the Holy Ghost is not like that. With the Holy Ghost, it's in you. It goes everywhere you go. Huh? Never leaving you. Constantly beside you. Huh? With you. Isn't that a good thing? So then, we should come to a point where we know it's voice. Sometimes I talk to the saints and say, I don't know the voice of the Lord. Why is that? You know why that is? Y'all want me to tell you? Not spending enough time listening. Hmm? Not, not reading the scriptures. That's how you get to know the voice of the Lord. Reading the scriptures. Meditating on it. And then the Holy Ghost brings back that word to your heart. Your mind. The more you know of the scriptures of God, the deeper you can have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. If you only know a couple verses, then you're going to be in a kindergarten relationship with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. But if you, if you know and study some books uh, of, of the Bible, I ain't talking about commentary, I'm talking about books of the Bible, then, then, then when, 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 when conditions and situations come up, you give the Holy Ghost something to work with and bring back to your remembrance. Huh? The more you know about the Word, the deeper relationship you'll have with God. Think about it. The Word of God is God's thoughts. That's simply what it is. It's literally the mind of Christ. If you want to have the mind of Christ, you've got to transfer what's in those pages into your mind. That's how you get the mind of Christ. You don't get the mind of Christ any other way. Huh? And, and the more you study the word of God, the, the, more, the, the more of the mind of Christ you have. Amen? Amen. Bishop, Bishop Reckliff said, and I believe it, he said, lazy saint, well, he said, lazy saint, and can't be saved. 
but I'm going to give you some leeway. leeway. A lazy saint going to have a hard time. <laughs> huh? Huh? Why? Well, because you're not, you're, not, you're not building yourself up. You're not putting anything in there for it to work with. Have you ever came to a dress? Uh, I, I myself haven't. <laughs> but the dress was ripped. Huh? And they want you to fix it. But you don't have any tools to fix it. That's like we do with the Holy Ghost. We in situations and conditions. And we want God to lead us and guide us. Right? But we don't have the word in us. You follow me? My brother. I was going to say the same thing you were saying. Go ahead. Without the word, you can't fight the enemy. Can't fight it. That's the only thing we can fight the enemy. That's right. It's the word of God. That's right. And if you don't have the word in you, when he comes in like a flood, he'll cut you down. Right. Notice. But the word of God will lift up a standard. Yeah. Notice. Then we're going to let you go. The, the word, when it says put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God is the word. All of those pieces of the armor equates to the word. Huh? And, and that's how you fight the devil. Am I right? Hallelujah. So if you want to have the mind of Christ, You've got to study the Word. And I'm going to tell you, a good, two good Bibles to have is the Thompson Chain Bible because it, it leads you throughout the Scriptures. Right? And the Life Application Bible. Two good Bibles to have. Thompson Chain Bible and Life Application Bible. Because in the Life Application Bible, it literally breaks down how to apply those Scriptures to your life. We need that. Amen? What good is it for me to know the scriptures but not know how to apply it? You gotta know how to apply it. Am I right? Amen. Would you repeat that again, please? The, the two good Bibles to have is the Thompson Chain Bible and the Life Application Bible. Two good Bibles. The Life Application, the Thompson Chain Bible, it gives you line on line. When you follow that chain, it'll give you the scriptures and then every scripture connected with that scripture in the Bible. And the Life Application Bible, it gives you, it gives you the word and then it tells you how to apply that word in situations. Which is what we gotta know. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. This is good stuff here. Yes, it is. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Above all else, I don't wanna fail the game. Huh? Above all else, we gotta see Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Huh? Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. All right, read the last verse. Read that verse again real quick. But, if ye, but ye are not in the flesh. You're not in the flesh. But in the spirit. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Uh-huh. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of you. All right, read. And if Christ be in you, uh -huh. the body is dead because of sin. Now, if Christ is in you, uh, your body is still dead because of sin. Uh, sin killed us. Right? Read. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Uh, now, the spirit, though, brings about life. Uh, it's the fenua. It's the breath of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. When it's, you got that same spirit when God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. Huh? Hallelujah. Life. And notice, it's life because of righteousness. 
living in what God calls right. Am I right? That's all I want to know. When Paul got saved, he said, look, forget all about my degrees. Forget about me being a Pharisee. Forget about me being a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I'm determined not to know anything among you. Huh? Say Jesus Christ and what? That's all we want to know. <laughs> all I want to know is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Am I right? Hallelujah. My God. My God. Give God praise. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm free. Are you glad to be free? Hallelujah. No more change. Huh? And you know, the only times I feel bound is when I'm when I'm thinking carnal. Huh? Huh? You gotta, gotta drop that. Huh? When when you feel sad, start start thinking about woe is me and looking on the other side, looking what the Jones has got. You know what I mean? And start and, and you know what too? Thinking about, well, you know, I think a lot of people are growing and crying, and I ain't growing. What's the use? Loose here. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Forget about that. Uh, uh, one thing about the Holy Ghost, it accepts you where you are. Uh, hallelujah. And it's there to build you up. Amen? Amen. A personal trainer, a coach. <laughs> hallelujah. I got several coaches that try to help me with the uh, daycare or whatever. Whatever. I called him, I asked him for advice. And you know, they don't, they don't, they don't put me down when I don't know something. Uh, say, Frank, you dumb. Uh, well, Frank just throwing the towel. You know what I mean? Uh, I make little, I make, I make little uh, progress. Oh, Frank, you <laughs> uh, 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 You understand what I'm saying? That's the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost, it cheers you all. It tells you you can make it. Uh, get up. Walk this way. Am I right? Hallelujah. Come on here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost bring things to your remembrance, too, though. If you get too high-minded. <laughs> but that's all good, though. Am I right? Hallelujah. I remember. Uh, 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 we thank God for those that are tuned in with us on today. And we want to uh, praise God for... Uh, the, the closing out of our service. Amen. We thank God and praise God for those that are, are listening and we want to worship God in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. But uh, I was uh, 